குட் ஈவினிங் ஆஸ்பிரண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு தி ஹிந்து நியூஸ் அனாலிசிஸ் பிராட் யூ பை சங்கர் ஐஎஸ் அகாடமி ஃபார் த டேட் ஃபோர்த் ஆஃப் அக்டோபர் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி டூ டிஸ்பிளேட் ஹியர் ஆர் தி ஆர்டிகல்ஸ் டேக்கன் அப் ஃபார் டுடேஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் வித் திஸ் லெட்ஸ் கெட் இன் டு அவர் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆர்டிகல் டிஸ்கஷன் Let's take up this text and context article. See, this article speaks about mediation, which is one of the forms of alternate dispute resolution. He shortly called this as ADR. See, the Mediation Bill 2021 was introduced in the Raja Sabha in last December. The bill proposes mandatory mediation before filing litigation in the courts. At the same time, it safeguards the right of litigants to approach the competent courts for urgent relief. Here the mediation process will be confidential and immunity is provided against its disclosure in certain cases the bill also proposes to establish the mediation council of india and also provides for community mediation here the parties who fail to attend pre litigation mediation without a reasonable reason may incur a cost However as per article 21 of the Indian constitution access to justice is a constitutional right which cannot be restricted by the proposed bill this is the crux of the article given here in this context let's learn about ADR the reasons for the need of ADR in India about the different forms of ADR and also about ADR's advantages over conventional judiciary and finally about the steps needed to be taken to promote ADR in India Before getting into the discussion the syllabus relevant to this topic is given here for your reference you can have a look see the alternate dispute resolution refers to the method of resolving a dispute which is seen as an alternative for litigation in courts ADR processes are decision making processes that do not involve litigation or violence in india an alternate system is available to the disputing parties including arbitration conciliation mediation and negotiation now let's see some of the reasons for the need of adoption of adrs in india see it is a well known fact that the present judicial system is extremely expensive and delaying the parties to a dispute have to wait for years to gain justice This lengthy and expensive process of litigation has reduced the faith of common people in the judicial system being followed by the Indian courts. This weakness of the judicial system has given birth to alternate remedies for the disposition of disputes. Alternative remedies provide cheap and speedy justice and that is the reason that ADR mechanism is being preferred by the disputing parties for the resolution of their disputes. Now coming to the different forms of ADR first is the arbitration under this mechanism the dispute is submitted to an arbitral tribunal which will make a decision on the dispute and the decision made is mostly binding on the parties though it resembles the courtroom based settlement it involves less procedure and generally there is no right to appeal an arbitrator's decision except for some interim measures there is very little scope for judicial intervention in the arbitration process Next in line is the conciliation method. In this process, the disputed parties with the help of a conciliator or neutral third person will study the issue and will arrive at a mutual settlement. In this method, usually the conciliator would investigate the issue and will draft a report on the methods of settlement. However, the report is not binding on the parties. Next is the mediation. It helps to settle the disputes between parties with the help of a mediator. See the mediator will not decide but instead he will just help the parties in reaching an agreement in the process the final decision is made by the parties themselves and not by the mediator now coming to the negotiation see the disputing parties will settle the disputes among themselves without the aid of a third person or negotiator in this process even if a negotiator is involved his role would be very limited Bargaining is a common feature of this form of alternate dispute resolution. Finally, we will see about Lok Adalat or People's Court. It is a unique system developed in India. It acts as a forum where disputes or cases pending in the courts of law or at pre litigation state are settled or compromised. Lok Adalats are provided with statutory recognition under the Legal Services Authorities Act 1987 also as per this act the award or decision made by the Lok Adalas is deemed to be a decree of civil court its decision is final and binding on the parties 
if in case the parties are not satisfied with the decision they are free to initiate litigation by approaching the court of appropriate jurisdiction this is all with respect to the different forms of alternate dispute resolution now talking about the advantages of adr over the conventional judiciary system in india see adr takes less time so it will help people to resolve their disputes in a short period as compared to the courts then adr is cost effective when compared to the judicial system in india and it is free from the technicalities of courts in adr informal ways are applied in resolving a dispute unlike conventional courts also the people are free to express themselves without any fear of court of law and they have the chance to reveal the true facts without disclosing it to any court this is all with respect to the advantages of adr over the conventional judicial system now coming to the steps that need to be taken to promote adr see the following suggestions i am going to discuss were given by the indian bar association so you can use these points in your mains examination now we will see the suggestions one by one coming to the first suggestion the parallel adr institutions should be established largely in all parts of the country they must be established at remote levels in the same manner as the courts of law then each court should have mediation and arbitration centers and these centers should ensure that the disputes capable of being resolved through any of the adr methods must be taken first by the adr forum if the parties fail to arrive at settlement through the adr forum then only the matter needs to be taken to the courts then the arbitration and mediation centers or institutions presently existing in india mostly deal with commercial disputes and the government need to make sure to establish new private bodies for non commercial disputes such as family disputes and finally the establishment empowerment and legal recognition of adr bodies in the country would be of no use unless the people are aware of the alternate dispute resolution methods so the knowledge of adr options should be disseminated to the weaker sections of the society by performing street plays regularly such performance has to be made in the local dialect and language of the respective areas these are all some of the suggestions which can be followed by the government to promote alternate dispute resolution in india with this we have come to the end of this discussion through this discussion we saw about alternate dispute resolution methods advantages of adr over conventional courts and finally some of the suggestions to increase adr's presence in india with this let's move on to the next news article see this article here it says that as part of dasara celebrations dandiya and garba dance events have been lined up at many venues across the bangalore city the fascinating fact here is Chair Garba has been arranged for senior citizens to provide them with a comfortable dance experience. This is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us understand about the two dance forms given in the article. First of all, let us see about the history of both the dances Dandiya and Garba. If we see the history of these two dance forms, that is Garba and Dandiya, they both originated in Gujarat. and they are performed during navratri now you may ask why during navratri the reason is that these dance art forms are a dramatization of the nine day battle between goddess durga and the demon king mahishasura in hindu mythology and in this battle the goddess durga emerged victoriously this is what is symbolized by navratri as well that is the triumph of good over evil now coming to the dances firstly let us see the dandiya dance dandiya is also called as dandiya ras it is a dance form performed during the time of navratri as we saw earlier it has its origins in gujarat to know completely about this dance you should know the origins of it see originally it was performed in honor of goddess durga the dance form represents a battle between the demon mahishasura and the goddess Another legend states that the dance form originated from Krishna and Radha's Ras Leela hence the name Dandiya Ras also it was believed that earlier it was performed only by men who sometimes used swords instead of sticks in the dance performance now coming to the features of Dandiya the dance attire comprises of bamboo sticks painted in bright colors you may wonder what they are doing with the sticks right see the performers strike the wooden sticks in the rhythmic beats and a drummer standing in the center of the circle commands the rhythm of the dance 
people assemble in two circular formations with the inner circle moving in a clockwise direction and the outer circle moving in the opposite direction so often clubbed with another dance form called garba it differs from garba the celebrations start after the performance of the ritual of aarti varies garba is performed prior to it now coming to the garba dance traditionally it is performed around an earthen pot with a lamp inside which is called as garba deep this representation is symbolic the lantern symbolizes life that is the fetus in the womb in particular the pot itself is a symbol of the body within which divinity resides dancers move around in circles making circular movements with their hands and feet around this earthen pot this gesture symbolizes the circle of life which moves from life to death to rebirth leaving only the mother divine unmoved unchanging and invincible with these info about the dancers let us see how both these dancers differ from each other see garba has a more devotional appeal this is because it is performed to bhajans and chants praising the many divine forms of the goddess as we already saw it is done before the aarti is performed on the other hand dandiya is usually played during the late evening as part of the merriment after the aarti is done see even though we do not know why we perform these dance forms every year but the real essence lies in the warmth and togetherness we feel when we gather around the family and friends for these 9 days it is a time filled with joy love and devotion the devotion is directed towards the goddess and is also a manifestation of the gratitude we feel in being alive and navaratri would be incomplete without these resplendent art forms that's all with respect to the dance forms with this let's move on to the next news article take a look at this article this article here says that a total of 1720 suggestions and objections were received in connection to the draft delimitation report of municipal corporation of delhi as per the article the majority of the feedback came from political parties resident welfare associations and individuals this is the essence of the article given here in this context let us understand about delimitation process in detail first of all what is delimitation delimitation is defined as the act or process of fixing boundaries or limits of territorial constituencies in a country having a legislative body see specifically in the indian context delimitation primarily means the process of redrawing boundaries of lok sabha and state assembly seats to represent changes in the population also know that election will be conducted only after this exercise now you may wonder why is this done the objective of the delimitation is to have equal representation to equal segments of the population other than this delimitation is done to ensure a fair division of geographical areas so that all political parties or candidates contesting elections have a level playing field in terms of number of votes see in the normal course of events the exercise is carried out few years after census like i said before it is done to ensure that each seat has approximately equal number of voters now with this basic information let us move on to see how this act of delimitation is done under article 82 the parliament enacts a delimitation act after every census once the act is in force the union government sets up a delimitation commission made up of a retired supreme court judge the chief election commissioner and the respective state election commissioners the commission is supposed to determine the number and boundaries of the constituencies here note that delimitation commissions post independence were set up in the years 1952 1963 1972 and 2002 the last delimitation exercise was finished in the year 2008 when the 2001 census was taken as the basis for readjusting the boundaries of the existing lok sabha and assembly constituencies The delimitation commission is also tasked with additional duties like identifying seats reserved for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. All this is done on the basis of the latest census and in case of difference of opinion among members of the commission the opinion of the majority prevails. The draft proposals of the delimitation commissions are published in the official gazettes of the states concerned and at least two vernacular papers for public feedback. 
the commission also holds public sittings after hearing the public it considers objections and suggestions received in writing or orally during those sittings and carries out the necessary changes in today's article we particularly saw about this objections only after hearing the public the final order is published in the gazette of india and also the respected state gazettes it comes into force on a date specified by the president that's all with respect to the delimitation through this discussion we learned about the process of delimitation in india and how it is carried out with this let's move on to the next news article discussion let's take up this editorial page article for discussion it talks about the jal jeevan mission as per the article about 53 percentage of the eligible rural households now have tap water access in india government claims that there is a 37 percentage point rise from 2019 when the scheme was announced this is the essence of the news article given here in this context let us understand about jal jeevan mission in detail what is this jal jeevan mission see the government of india has restructured and subsumed the ongoing national rural drinking water program into jal jeevan mission under the ministry of jal shakti in 2019 This is done to provide functional household tap connection to every rural household that is har ghar nal se jal by 2014 from this itself we can easily find out the vision of the program so the vision is to provide safe and adequate drinking water through individual household tap connections by 2014 to all rural households in india with this basic information about the scheme now let us see about the service delivery see the goal of the jal jeevan mission is to provide functional household tap connection to every rural household with service level at the rate of 55 liters per capita per day which is nothing but to provide 55 liters of clean drinking water to every rural household per day now we shall see the institutional mechanism at the different levels see at the national level there is a national jal jeevan mission at the state level there is a state water and sanitation mission at the district level there is district water and sanitation mission now coming to the panchayat level there is pani samiti otherwise called as village water and sanitation committee or user group that's all about the mission now coming to the article given in the newspaper it says that the government conducts annual surveys to evaluate the success of the scheme a recent audit by a private agency found that around 62% of the rural households in india had fully functional tap water connection within their premises apart from this a report of the parliamentary standing committee on water resources stated that 46% households had such fully functional water tap connections not only this the survey revealed wide disparities also in the achievement see as per the survey tamil nadu himachal pradesh goa and puducherry reported more than 80 percentage of households with fully functional connections but the households in rajasthan kerala manipur tripura maharashtra madhya pradesh mizoram and sikkim had less than half of such connections moreover the report mentions a problem of chlorine contaminations in the drinking water It said that 93% of the water samples were free of bacterial contamination but most of the anganwadi centers and schools have residual chlorine which are higher than the permissible range this is all with respect to the jal jeevan mission with respect to rural india also note that in the budget speech of 2021 our finance minister announced jal jeevan urban mission this is a separate mission which focus on providing drinking water supply to urban households Jal Jeevan Mission Urban was launched under the Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry. Through this discussion we came to know about the Jal Jeevan Mission its objective and the recent survey conducted to find out the progress of the scheme and also finally we saw about the recently launched Jal Jeevan Urban Mission. With this let's move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this article here. This article speaks about Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana. This is in news because the central government is planning to bring convergence between the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme and Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana PMKSY. This plan is proposed to restore degraded land and to reverse desertification in the country. This is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let's learn about PMKSY in detail. 
சி த பிரதான் மந்திரி கிருஷி சிஞ்சாய் யோஜனா இஸ் அ சென்ட்ரலி ஸ்பான்சர்டு ஸ்கீம் ரிலேட்டிங் டு வாட்டர் கன்சர்வேஷன் அண்ட் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் த மேஜர் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் ஆஃப் தி ஸ்கீம் இஸ் டு அச்சீவ் கன்வர்ஜன்ஸ் ஆஃப் இன்வெஸ்ட்மெண்ட்ஸ் இன் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் அட் தி ஃபீல்டு லெவல் த அதர் அப்ஜெக்டிவ்ஸ் இன்க்ளூட் எக்ஸ்பேன்ஷன் ஆஃப் கல்டிவபிள் ஏரியா அண்டர் அஷூர்ட் இரிகேஷன் தென் டு இம்ப்ரூவ் ஆன் ஃபார்ம் வாட்டர் யூஸ் எஃபிஷியன்சி டு ரெடியூஸ் வேஸ்டேஜ் ஆஃப் வாட்டர் to enhance the adoption of precision irrigation and other water saving technologies like drip irrigation sprinkler irrigation etc and finally to promote sustainable water conservation practices this is all about the objectives of the scheme now talking about the different components of the scheme c pm ksy has been conceived by amalgamating the earlier schemes of the various ministries The following schemes were brought under the umbrella scheme of Pradhan Mandri Krishi Sincha Yojana. They are Accelerated Irrigation Benefits Program of the Ministry of Jal Sakti, Integrated Watershed Management Program of the Ministry of Rural Development and finally the On-Farm Water Management Program of the Ministry of Agriculture. These schemes were brought under the Pradhan Mandri Krishi Sincha Yojana. Also note that PMKSY is being implemented by three ministries now. they are ministry of agriculture ministry of jal sakti and ministry of rural development the component of the ministry of rural development is watershed development this is to mainly undertake rain water conservation then the construction of farm ponds water harvesting structures small check dams and contour bending etc next coming to harkatko pani this particular scheme is being implemented by the ministry of jal sakti it means water to every farm The objective of the scheme is to undertake various measures for creation of assured irrigation sources and the ministry will promote the construction of diversion canals field channels including development of water distribution systems etc now finally coming to the ministry of agriculture's per drop more crop scheme see it will promote efficient water conservation and precision water application devices like drips sprinklers pivots rain guns in the farm then it will also promote the construction of micro irrigation structures to supplement source creation activities the ministry also undertakes extension activities for the promotion of scientific moisture conservation and agro economic measures with this we have seen briefly about the different components of the pradhan mandri krishi sinchai yojana now let's see about the working of this scheme see the program architecture of pm ksy will adopt a decentralized state level planning that will allow states to draw up their own irrigation development plans based on district irrigation and state irrigation plans the state level sanctioning committee chaired by the chief secretary of the state will be vested with the authority to oversee its implementation and sanction projects now coming to the national level See the program will be supervised and monitored by an interministerial national steering committee which is constituted under the chairmanship of prime minister with union ministers from the concerned ministries here the national executive committee is also constituted under the chairmanship of vice chairman of niti ayog it is done to oversee program implementation allocation of resources interministerial coordination monitoring and performance assessment etc With this we have come to the end of this discussion through this discussion we came to know about Pradhan Mandri Krishi Sincha Yojana and the different components of it with this let's move on to the next part of our discussion that is prelims practice question discussion today we have taken three different questions for our discussion now let's start with the first question see it is a match the following type of question the dancers are given in one column and the states associated with it are given in the another column the question asked for the correct pairs now coming to the first dance form which is kalbelia see kalbelia is a sensuous folk dance performed by the women of the kalbelia community of rajasthan so statement 1 is correct the costumes and the dance movement are similar to that of the serpents unesco has inscribed kalbelia folk songs and dances in the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2010 statement 1 is correct now coming to the second statement bhangra see bhangra is a highly energetic folk dance of punjab so statement 2 is also correct let us see few additional facts about bhangra bhangra is accompanied with infectious and catchy drum beats it is a popular form of celebration during festivities of punjab the next art form given is bihu 
See, Bihu is a popular dance form of Assam performed in group by both men and women. So, statement 3 is wrong. Now, coming to the fourth art form, Garba. We have seen this detail in our discussion. So, the fourth art form given here is matched wrong. So, the correct answer for this question is option B. Only two pairs. Take a look at these images. These images shows three different art forms. The first one is Bihu, the second one is Bhangra and the third one is Kalbelia. You can pause the video and have a look. Now moving on to the second question. It is a two statement question and we have to find out the correct statements. Let me read out the statements first. Statement 1 says that the delimitation commission was first set up in the year 1952 and it was last set up in the year 2011. From our discussion, we know that the first part of this statement is right, but the second part is wrong. Delimitation commissions have been set up four times in independent India. They were set up in 1952, 1963, 1973 and 2002. There was no delimitation after the 1981 and 1991 census. The second part of the statement says that it was last set up in the year 2011, which is wrong. So statement 1 is incorrect. Now coming to the second statement. The composition of delimitation commission consists of chief election commissioner and state election commissioners only. This also we saw in the discussion itself. The union government sets up a delimitation commission made up of a retired Supreme Court judge, the chief election commissioner of India and the respective state election commissioners. So statement 2 is also incorrect. So the correct answer for this question is option D, neither 1 nor 2. Moving on to the final question of the day. It is a three statement question. We have to find out the statements which are not correct. Coming to the first statement, it says that Pradhan Mandiri Krishi Shinchai Yojana is a central sector scheme. This statement is completely wrong. It is not a central sector scheme, but a centrally sponsored scheme. Here, the pattern of assistance will be met by both central and state governments in the ratio 60 is to 40 for all states except the northeastern and Himalayan states. In the case of both these states, the ratio of sharing is 90 is to 10. For the union territories, funding pattern is 100% by the central government. Statement 1 is incorrect. Now coming to the second statement. The main objective is to expand cultivable area with assured irrigation, reduced wastage of water and improved water use efficiency. This statement is absolutely right. This is the main objective of the Pradhan Mandiri Krishi Shinchai Yojana. So statement 2 is correct. Now coming to the third statement. The component of watershed development of the scheme is implemented by the Ministry of Jal Shakti. This statement is wrong because the component of watershed development of the scheme is implemented by the Ministry of Rural Development. So the correct option for this question is option C, 1 and 3 only. Displayed here is the quiz question for you. Interested aspirants can post the correct option in the comment section. I also have a main question for you. Interested aspirants can write answer for this question and post it in the comment section. With this, we have come to the end of our discussion today. If you have liked our video, please hit the like button, do comment and share with your friends. To see more videos like these, subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy.